Welcome to our training on confined space hazards. Imagine you are near a confined space at work. One of your coworkers goes into the space, and a short time later, you hear a loud clatter. You look into the space and see your coworker passed out. He does not respond when you radio him and yell into the space. What would you do? Would you go in to rescue him? This situation actually happened, and unfortunately, the worker did attempt to rescue his coworker. He didn't follow confined space procedures. As he went in, he had no way of knowing that a deadly toxic vapor was building up in the space. Shortly after he began trying to carry his coworker out, he collapsed and succumbed to the vapor too. Sadly, both he and his coworker died. There is no doubt that the would-be rescuer thought he was doing the right thing. It's possible that he and his coworker were unaware of the dangers of working in a confined space. If they had followed a confined space procedure to monitor the air and used an established rescue protocol, things might have turned out differently. But sadly, we'll never know. Your employer does not ever want you to be in the position of either of these two workers. That's why you're taking this training so that you can understand the risks associated with confined spaces and the procedures your employer has in place to protect you and those around you. Don't take this information lightly. It can make the difference between life and death. Learning objectives. After completing this training, you will be able to recognize a confined space, identify employer responsibilities regarding confined spaces, Explain the responsibilities of confined space authorized entrance, attendants, and entry supervisors. Identify hazards associated with confined spaces, and identify the differences in flammable, toxic, irritant, or corrosive and asphyxiating atmospheres.